All right, so let's begin this lesson by opening a brand new terminal window. So I'm going to click my terminal down here on the, on the dock. You can also use that uh, command space command to trigger spotlight and uh, type in terminal here and launch it from there. So here I have my terminal. Let me expand it so it occupies the full screen. And uh, the commands that I'm about to issue here aren't really critically important. This is one of the few lessons in this course where we're going to be using the terminal. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview of, of what it is that we're exactly doing here. We always begin by referencing the Anaconda environment that we want to install or update the packages in. So Anaconda comes with this feature called environments and each one basically serves as a sandbox. The reason that environments exist is so that developers can do things like test their code in different versions of Python, test their code with different versions of libraries, test their code with different combinations of libraries just to see if there's bugs or errors. In our case, we don't really need that kind of flexibility where we're going to keep all of our work within the single main environment and do all of our work in Pandas there. But I'm just explaining exactly why we need to do this because we do, we do need to trigger the environment that we're going to be updating all of our libraries in. And that environment is called root, like the root of a tree. So in order to activate that Anaconda environment, we want to type source space activate space root. So when I execute this, the word root will appear here on the left in parentheses. That basically means we've selected that Anaconda environment, which is at this point the only one that we have. And the commands that we execute at this point will run within that environment. So uh, developers use this to update libraries in one scenario, but not in the other, and so on. So let's begin by updating uh, what's something called Conda. This is a, a small point of confusion for me when I was starting out. But basically, Anaconda, as I mentioned, is this large distribution of Python libraries. And within it, there is a uh, its own library called Conda. So like Anaconda, but without the first three letters. And what Conda does is install other libraries. So it's a Python package for installing other packages. It's a library for installing other libraries. So what I want to do here is actually update the installer first to ensure we're up to date. So I'm going to write Conda, which is the name of the library. I'm going to issue it a command, which is update. And then afterwards, I'm going to provide the name of the library that I want to update. So in this case, it is going to be Conda. So I'm telling Conda, the package manager, that I want to update itself. So I'm going to execute this. And what it's basically doing is essentially querying a server on the internet and telling you whether the library can be installed or is out of date and so on. And keep in mind, because you're going to be following this process at a time in the future, your versions of libraries that are presented here may be, uh, well, certainly will be perhaps more in the future, so they may be later versions. Um, basically, whenever you receive any prompt like this that says proceed, uh, yes or no, that's Y or N, that basically means that the packages can be installed or updated. So whenever you see this prompt, just enter Y and press enter. Keep in mind that your what you see on your screen may be different than mine or probably will be different than mine. But in this case, you can basically see that it's telling us that it's going to download the following packages and the following packages will be updated. So we can see my Conda package that I requested to update is going to be moved from 4.1.6 to 4.2.7. And again, your numbers here, your version numbers can be completely different. Uh, as long as there's an update available, it'll give you the latest one and that prompt. And all you have to do is press Y and uh, it'll update it to the latest version. Now you may be wondering why it's showing me this other stuff, even though I only requested Conda to update here. Well, the reason is because this Conda library that we see right here is dependent on these other libraries to run. And I mentioned this is true for Pan so something like Pandas as well. Pandas is uh, dependent on another library called NumPy. That's why we wanted to install everything within one distribution because it takes care of that dependency problem. But in, in case you see these, uh, this prompt that says multiple packages will be updated and you only requested one, that's totally fine. Just press Y here. And what it'll do is basically download those packages, unpack them, and install them in your Anaconda directory. So follow along with the following commands. Again, if you receive any update prompt or a proceed prompt, just click uh, Y for yes, and then press enter, and it'll take care of all the work for you. So my next command is going to be conda. Uh, and now instead of, uh, actually, let's do conda install instead of conda update. And then I'm going to put a name of a library called markdown. So actually install, what's great about it is if the library is already installed, but it has an available update, it will prompt you. And if it's not installed, then it will uh, offer to install it in this case. So you can see here, I've requested a library called Markdown, which we use for rendering text within our Jupyter Notebook. 
and you can see it says the following new packages will be installed. So it's currently not part of my Anaconda folder. Here is the version that's going to be installed. It's not dependent on anything. Here I have my proceed prompt, so I'm going to enter Y, click enter, and then it's going to install it for me. So this is the same process that you should follow. At this point, I'm just going to enter a terminal command called clear to uh, wipe everything from the screen and bring it back to the top. And my next thing is going to be conda install bottleneck. So this library and the next one are both used for speed acceleration processes. You can see here in this case, this requested uh, library is installed and already up to date. So I'll get a message like this without a prompt. Yours may be out of date. So if it is, just press Y again. My next command here is conda install numexpr. I believe that's numexpress and that's yet another acceleration library. So I think that what it does is modify how Pandas works behind the scenes. Here you can see this one needs to be updated, so I'll press Y for yes. And I'm going to press clear again. And one more thing I want to ensure you run, which is conda install matplotlib, which is a library we'll use later in the course for plotting. Uh, sometimes it isn't installed. I think it is a part of the standard uh, Anaconda distribution. Yes, it is. So you should be good, but just run this command to play it safe. There's no harm, of course, if it's already installed. It's just going to give you this message and move on to the next prompt. And you may be wondering, well, we have 150 libraries. This is an incredibly lazy and inefficient process for updating all 150 of them. And you'd be correct. Usually I use install in order to uh, install brand new libraries, so I specify which one I want. In order to update all the ones that we already have installed, uh, what we can do is run conda update and then put a dash, actually a space, and then two dashes, conda update dash dash, and then write the word all. So this is basically what's called a flag, and it tells the conda program that we want to update all of the libraries within our Anaconda distribution. And when I uh, run this command, it's going to query the internet for all of the libraries that are presently installed. It's going to find their latest versions. You can see this huge blob right here are all out of date. So I'm going to press Y here press my enter or return key and it's going to start the process of downloading uh, and unpacking and installing all of these libraries. Again, I'm going to leave this up so we can track the progress, but keep in mind on your end you may have less libraries listed here, you may have more libraries, uh, your version numbers on the right side there and on the left side may be different depending on when you install the Anaconda distribution and when you're running the commands and watching the videos because uh, whatever version the development team uh, released, the latest one is going to be the one that's listed right here on the right here. But uh, this is just going to update them all to the latest and greatest. And uh, just keep in mind, I recommend, um, even though a lot of these libraries don't necessarily live in the Pandas ecosystem, some of them do. And generally speaking, I like to keep all of my libraries up to date. Sometimes it may break code if, if certain functions are deprecated, but I think it's better to catch that early and fix it and ensure that it's future proof rather than keep things old and, and running in, in old and in kind of outdated versions. So what I like to do is access the terminal maybe once a month and run those familiar commands of source activate root. Uh, which activates the root environment in Anaconda, and then that conda update dash dash all command. And I run that once a month to make sure that all the libraries here are up to date and that I'm working with the latest and greatest versions. So as you can see here, it's moving through all of these libraries. On the right, you can also see the, the time in, in seconds it took to uh, download it. You can see the rate of download on your computer. And uh, to the left, of course, we have all of these libraries listed. So I'll, I'll let this run for a couple more seconds while it completes, and then I'll check back in. All right, so now it's reached the part of the process where it successfully downloaded all of the libraries, the latest versions of them within our Anaconda distribution. And you can see it's going to have a multiple step uh, extraction process. After that, I think it's going to do something like unpack and then install. And again, all of this is within the Anaconda folder. So um, we're going to have the latest versions in, of, of these libraries in there. And if you ever want to remove all of these, all you have to do is just uh, delete that Anaconda folder from your computer.
So you're actually going to see the packages appear in the left here within those square brackets. Right now we're on SciPy right here. That's uh, another huge uh, scientific computing library for Python. Oops, let me scroll down. And it's just going to work. This installation process will generally take maybe, you know, uh, three to four minutes to run, just like the regular installation. This is basically the update process. So there we can see our notebook. And now it's unlinking them. And finally, linking them. Unlinking Unlink and linking. I don't know what it's thinking. So once we get back to this prompt where you're greeted with another you know, flashing terminal and you're ready, well, then at that point you're done. We've successfully updated all of the libraries. We're good to go. So I can uh, leave the terminal here. I can just use my command, Q command, to leave it. And now everything is up to date. So we've successfully uh, downloaded and installed Anaconda. We've updated all of our libraries. We're now ready to launch our Jupyter Notebook, which will be our development environment. And in the next lesson, I'll take you through the process of uh, showing you two different ways that we can access it. One from our uh, navigator application, our uh, graphical interface, and the second being directly from the terminal. So I'll see you there.